But first, joining me right now to preview what should be another wild week for investors with the Federal Reserve meeting coming up, the Chief Investment Officer of the Bonson Group, David Bonson, is here. And David, it is great to have you here. Good to be with you. Thank you so much. So you've got $2 billion in assets under management. You are focused on dividend payers, growth stories. How do you want to allocate money on the heels of what we've seen from the third quarter earnings season and ahead of the Fed meeting this upcoming week. What's interesting about being dividend growth equity investors is that we believe in it all the time. We think it's an all-weather strategy, but I honestly really believe it's particularly appropriate now. There's really compelling arguments to make for increasing defensiveness. You've had a huge run-up in growth. You do have uncertainty around the 2020 election, around global growth conditions, and certainly we know the China trade war is not fully uh, fixed and the, the resolution's not readily apparent. But then on the other hand, I believe there's plenty of opportunity for the economy to keep growing. If you get resolution on the trade side, you don't want to be overly defensive. We think that dividend growth space provides investors the two things they tell us they want the most. They need yield. We're in a low rate environment. And of course, they want something defensive in the equity side. I'm looking at earnings season so far. McDonald's was one disappointment, but you look at Intel just up dramatically in their results. You look at um, J.P. Morgan, Proctor. Dr. Gamble, Verizon, high quality companies delivering great results even in a challenging environment. So you think that the earnings season has been better than feared? It's, it, overall, it's been better than feared, yeah. and it's been particularly better in the dividend growth space that we're in. Let me, let me go back to what you just called the low rate environment, because investors are focused on two dates right now. One date is next week, yeah. October 29 and 30, when the Federal Reserve is going to have its upcoming meeting this upcoming week. And the second date is November 16th and 17th, and that's the APEC meeting. Yeah. That's the Asia Pacific Economic Council meeting, and that's where President Trump is supposed to meet with President Xi of China, and they're going to paper a deal, in yeah. other words, sign a deal for phase one of a trade agreement. Your thoughts on the Federal Reserve first. Let's go through those two dates first next week. Does the Fed cut? Yes, they do. Uh, Fed funds, futures markets pricing in now 96 percent chance that you, you get one cut next week, one quarter point. Uh, December looks more questionable now. It had been about 40 percent implied probability in the futures market. It's down to about 25 percent. I don't care if they do or not. I don't believe we need it, but I understand all the different arguments out there. It's really irrelevant. They're going to do it. Um, that's priced in. You get one cut in October. The issue in November, that's really, uh, I think a lot of investors are not appreciating the very high probability that, in fact, this deal goes forward, phase one gets inked, and that those December escalations do not happen. I think that becomes base case for the trade issue. And frankly, I thought the Vice President Pence yesterday was more dovish in his uh, comments at the talk, I think that you could even get a better trade resolution going into 2020. You know, Peter Navarro joined me this past week on, on Mornings with Maria, and he said if, in fact, we get a signed deal and we have an agreement with China where they stop stealing our intellectual property, where they stop the, the, the forced transfer of technology, where they buy more goods and open up access to China for American companies, we're going to see Dow 30,000. He thinks markets react positively. What do you I say? agree with him completely. The issue is what will get us there, and I've always felt that the intellectual property enforcement is the biggest issue. I, I have it on good word that that's really what kind of hung things up in May. They were 90 percent of the way there. Right. Going into 2020, how do you assess the field right now? I know you're writing a book on, on Elizabeth Warren, and I think businesses are quaking in their boots right now with yeah. the possibility that she becomes president. Obviously, she's got to get, get the nomination first, but I don't know. Is there somebody who's beating her? Well, no. Right now, uh, Joe Biden has been remarkably um, consistent and kind of hanging in there. He fell off a bit, but he hasn't. He's still there. I, I think that um, anything can happen in the next couple months. But I believe she will be the nominee, and I would be terrified of it. But it's not because I think that she will actually get done all these awful things she's threatened to do. I don't think it's good for our country to have that rhetoric and tone to come back from the Oval Office week after week demonizing entrepreneurs demonizing energy production, demonizing the whole idea well, of finance. It, putting, putting the conversation aside, she actually has policies that are going to, uh, some say, destroy the economy. You're talking about a wealth tax, yeah. higher income tax. I mean, we know what happened when the president instituted a, a drop in, 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 the ca in the corporate tax rate and the rollback in regulation. It actually moved the needle on economic Absolutely. growth. The, the hedge we have there, of course, is our founding fathers who don't allow her to go do that without the support of Congress, who has to be 
be reelected all the time. That wealth tax is not going to happen. And I have already written that chapter in the book. I will tell you, I can't wait to have a public argument about what a disaster of an idea that is. Yeah, you make so many great points. David, it's great to have you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. David Fonson there. Don't go anywhere. My one-on-one -on -one with Mark Benioff is up next. Stay with us.